Okay, now the compression coupling, what's it look like? It looks like this. Okay, now I'm not going to use these nuts that go on the end. Well, I'm going to call them nuts, even though they're not exactly, that's not what they are. Okay, I'm just going to use the main body of this coupling. So when you go in to purchase, to do this, what I'm going to call the old school way, is you got to take these ends off, all right? So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, I've taken it apart. Now this would go, if you were running a tube, okay? This would go into the tube, this part. And that's what that's for. Where you're hooking up a water line to go into a plastic tube, all right? I guess you could also possibly solder this um, to a copper as well, all right? But I'm not going to use this part. I'm going to use the main body, which is this piece here. So I'm going to unscrew this other side. All right, here it is with it taken apart. Okay, so I'm going to use this piece. Threads on each side. Okay. You're going to see how I'm going to fit it. I'm going to have to cut off this shark bite that I was going to use because it was stripped out when I went to use it. All right. So I'm going to cut that off. And then you're going to see how I'm going to use this for the next part of the process here. And this is old school. And uh, it's really, this is going to last forever. All right. So, no further ado, we'll get busy on that and I'll show you the next step. Okay, I'm in the process of cutting this off. Alright, normally I'm using two hands on this. And two hands and I tighten this down so it gets tighter on the copper pipe. So you want to turn it down. All right, it's kind of tight in the beginning of the turn and then as you continue to turn it loosens up as it cuts into the deeper into the copper pipe all right so this is just about ready to come off let's see if it does it this time around it may not and it may um, but I should be close to getting it here all right. Now, there we go. Now it just loosened up. All right. Okay. It's binding a little bit. That's a sign it's possibly ready to break free here. All right. It's tight. As you can tell, it's not turning as easy. Now we got it. Now it's getting freed up all right well I thought it was going to break at this point so I'm going to have to pause this and show you the next step sometimes it seems like you're tightening and turning and tightening and turning forever and it's just not going to go th come through it but it eventually will break through there it is see look at that and sometimes you want to ream out Okay, the end of the hole, but that looks really clean because it wants to flare out here on the inside of here, all right? The, but that looks pretty clean. All right, so now we'll do the next step. All right, you can see this is, this was the original fitting nut that was, goes over the copper pipe, but you see it's kind of dirty and big green and ugly well i'm going to clean this up i'm going to use a steel wool here to do it because you don't want to scratch it that way it just looks nice you could use you know 320 maybe or 600 grit but a brillo pad um or one of those green scrubbies um or like in my other video i had that uh, auto body scrubby which is actually like a 2000 3000 grit i believe um, but you, that way just keeps it from getting scratched up, all right? It will look more like this as an end result, all right? 
I may even just use this one, but I like the idea of using the old one. Things are just made better than they are made nowadays. And uh, so I like refurbishing where I can and use original equipment. Unless they're just wore out, of course. And uh, I don't believe that's the case here. That looks pretty decent. It's just dirty, okay? Um, yeah, that looks perfectly fine. Just dirty. All right. Who knows what this is? Well, for those of you that don't know, this is called the flaring tool. All right, and it's old school anymore. It shouldn't be. It should be the norm. Um, but everybody's getting into quicker and faster. So they're using these shark bites. As you've seen, the shark bite here, it's stripped out on me. I even tried using some plumber's tape to kind of get it to go, but it refused. And I wasn't going to continue to mess with it. So there's no way like the old way. I'm here to tell you. All right, so now I'm going to show you how it's used. All right, I'm going to put this sleeve, brass sleeve, on after I put on the nut that I cleaned up here. All right, here is the nut that I cleaned up. You can still see a little bit of scarring, you know, residue, but it's... Not in bad shape and it looks really good. All right. So I'm going to take this nut, stick it there, take the sleeve. Okay, slip it over here. Now we're ready to go. All right. But the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this expansion tool to broaden the opening i'm going to widen this a bit okay so that it gets a real nice seal now this may work without it may work perfectly fine without doing this but if you have the tool it just gives you a hundred percent reassurance um but this should be fine even without the this flaring tool okay so have that set up in just a second. Okay, the swing nut over here. All right. This slide will slide up into a notch. Okay, then you tighten it down. You see how I have the tube just barely sticking out, but I'm tightening this wing nut down over here. All right. And this does the same thing over here. Okay, and get that snug down over here, get them equal pressure. All right. I have that sticking out of oh, almost probably about a quarter of an inch if you look here. All right, it's about a quarter inch out roughly, maybe three sixteenths. Um, I don't know what the exact rule is for this. Um, but that should be efficient. All right. And I'm just kind of getting it snugged. I'm, I'm just wanting to hold the pipe in place. That's all I'm wanting it to do. If there's more to it, then somebody can tell me more about this. But this is what I know. Okay, now I got to improvise because there is a tool that clamps to this. Okay. And then a... A centerpiece goes into the middle and it, you screw it in and it spreads this out okay and that's how that works but I'm missing the tool and so this is what I'm gonna have to do I got this large Phillips screwdriver here all right so I'm gonna take this push this into the center and I'm gonna bring this back and forth and I'm going to widen this out, but I can't do this with both hands. I have to do this with both hands. So maybe I'll uh, reposition this camera so we can get a picture of that process. Okay, so here we go. 
All right, I'm going to hold this. Take this, I'm going to push in, I'm going to turn. Then I'm going to check it with the sleeve. And it should be more than what I'm getting it. But that should be halfway decent of a flare. The flaring tool would work much, 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 much better. And that's for sure. So I'm going to loosen up this wing nut. All right. Get this one loose. Okay. Loosen this one up. Swing this down. This will even swing up and create an L. All right. But anyways, that's how this works. Okay, this goes up. You just tighten her down with the wing nuts and she stays together. And that's how that's done. Okay. Now let's check and see. Let's test it and see how it's how much it's flared and is it gonna work. Is it going to keep this from coming off? Yes. It's good and snug. Um, I think that's going to be efficient. It's a little loose, but not bad. Um, I think that's going to be okay. Like I was saying, you could probably get away without doing that. Um, so, now... Let's get this put on. If you notice, okay, there's a built-in stop inside here. There's that inside edge, all right, at the, where it bottoms out, okay? And so this goes, and then this sleeve will slide in. All right, and makes it all one and watertight at this point. Okay, so that's how that works. We're going to get this tightened down here. Okay, push this all the way in. You can see, all right, this three eighths of an inch roughly space. And where that now touches, because that's now bottomed out. As you see, I'm pushing the pipe back. It's all the way in there. Now, we're going to take this nut and get it started. I'm doing this so that you can see. All right, we get that good and snug, not over tight. Just good. You want it snug and then a little bit more. Okay, all right, so now all right, now this is where you get your wrenches, two small crescent wrenches work would work really well, okay, there's one. And or an opened in wrench. Uh, oh, looks like uh, 17. Looks like the 17 is gonna work. Right here. All right. So that's cool. That's good. All right. So now, okay, you put the thumb screw on here. Get this adjusted. Okay, get this over here, get it adjusted down, okay, that's where we want it. I'm going to hold the coupling in place as I tighten the nut. And again, as you see, I'm spinning this wrench, alright, I'm just spinning it in basically in a circle. All right, 
Now, is that slipping on me? Uh, the 17. It may be a tad loose. Okay. It may be just a tad loose. That 17. Okay, now. There we go. Oops. All right. No, we're good. See, I'm just spinning this wrench. Okay. Again, see the wrench? I'm just spinning it. And I'm not having to move it much. But you want to stop it in the same place every time you do that. That way it doesn't change. Okay? You stop it at the same spot every time. Then you flip your wrench around and catch it. Okay? Now that's getting tight now. Then we go a little bit more. And got to feel it. That's tight. Okay. That's now tight. And we want to go about a quarter turn, half turn past tight and that should do it right there all right I held the coupling and turned the nut okay now here's my supply line and okay, we're gonna tighten this up okay All right, so we're going to tighten up the supply line. And again, I am going clockwise to tighten or counter clockwise to tighten, counterclockwise to loosen or Back to the lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. Um, but whatever makes sense and works for you. Sometimes I look at it and I call it, I'm screwing it down because it's going down the threads. Or I tighten it up because it's going up the threads. It's just whatever terminology and whatever works best for you. Um, for you to remember if you get confused with this process. If you don't, great. But some people have that going on and it gets confusing and frustrating. So, to eliminate that. Okay, and again, I'm doing this for those that haven't done it before. And that's my main thing here. If you haven't done it before and you're looking for information, this should help you get the job done. You have enough information to do it. And I'd learn as you go and learn from your mistakes. Don't be hard headed and refuse to learn from your mistakes. Because the learning curve is not a bad thing. You know, you go to school, you pay a lot to learn. Well, learn from your mistakes and you pay nothing. And you're ahead of the game. Okay, I got that kind of between. Okay, that's getting nice and snug there, and uh, okay, all right, now let's see how this feels coming up, we're going clockwise, that's tight, that's a little more. Okay. 
Sometimes it's less than a quarter turn. You just gotta feel it. Sometimes it's tight and then a eighth of a turn more. All right, but there you have it. Um, as long as everything else is tight, I can turn this on. Water is on, no leakage, no drips. Everything is nice and dry. Okay. Uh, we got hot water. Next thing I got to do from yesterday, from the previous video, is over here, not down there, but right here I have this valve I need to adjust, okay, because that line goes right over the other valve and turning it off on the handle, alright, so I got to take this valve here with the copper pipe and then turn the whole thing about oh 10 15 degrees to get it to remove that so that's what i'll do next okay you can see now that whoops there's a wrench okay i've loosened it and you can see now there's the handle this hose is no longer running straight across and interfering with my handle. It still interferes a bit, so I can turn it. And with my copper line there with this kind of like a U-shaped, all right, it allows me, and going to this flexible tube here, all right, it allows me to move this, okay? And I can move this up even more, all right, out of my way, as you see. Okay, um, and then I could even at this point, I could zip tie, I could zip tie this. Okay, let me give you a better angle of what I'm looking at. All right, now, which means that will allow me to go ahead and come up here and then zip tie this basically straight up. And then it will be completely out of my way okay down here at the valve all right now i've got a clear shot to the valve you can see the handle in case you're not sure what you're looking at here's the handle here all right i want to turn this this is in the off position it's going to cross okay when it's in line with your water line all right okay i'll show you when it's in line with it Now it's on. That's in the on position. It's in line with the water line. And that's a quarter turn valve. All right. And uh, that's the way they're doing most of these new ones. I did get this other one over here where I put the old handle back on and cleaned it up. This is a metal handle, so I preserved it. And this is... From Win Nelson's, this costs me $25 for this valve. And this is not a quarter turn, this is the old style, and it will turn, and you can adjust the water flow better. All right? And that's the old style, the old school. But that was a $25 valve. It just has the original metal handle on it, because nowadays they're plastic. All right, so now you know what I'm going to do, is I'm going to zip tie this up here okay and it'll be straight and completely out of the way of my handle over here so if i ever need to turn it off i don't have to fight with it and it will look not real nice neat and clean and uh not like an amateur so a lot of times these little things make the difference and uh it's important to pay attention to detail and uh, do your best and learn from your mistakes. Always. If there's a learning curve, learn from it. And you won't, if you went to school, you'd be paying to learn. If you learn from your mistakes, you don't continue to make them and you don't pay anything other than your time. So that's a good thing. 
All right, so never give up. Bye for now. Because there's always a way, so never give up. We're just keeping it real. God bless. Merry Christmas. And Happy New Year. Catch you on the next one. This is part three.